Hey, welcome back nerds, Afino here with a guide for the Elizabeth Exhibition Quest. This is a fun one, plays very differently from the others. Well, really from anything else in the game. Now, the core idea of this is that you have a mandatory support Elizabeth. And unlike Musashi though, she does all the heavy lifting if you raise her upright. Now to do this, you need to have her last hit enemies and consume their meat. So the early part of this run is really just doing that. Now, to my understanding, there's slightly more meat than the maximum cap of Ellie's stats. But in general, you want her to do the killing blows anyway. And against the boss enemies, she'll be doing exactly that. So don't sweat that too much. So early on, the big idea is that you have to build up Ellie's NP, because this wave has a boss. And the bosses in this fight have special defense buffs that they essentially act as if they have class advantage against everyone except Ellie. So she needs to be the one doing your uh, damage. Now there are three stats you can level on Ellie. Um, you can get her attack, health, and NP gain. The Wyverns here give attack, and they should be your main priority. Also, the Starfish. The Starfish gives NP gain. That you also want to focus on early on. The Giant Lizard, the, the Dignos Lizard, you can save that for last. Although really, it just depends on what cards you draw. Now, the boss does nerf um, your healing for a while, but at this point in the fight, it's not a big deal. A lot of your de facto healing comes from increases to your max health from eating meat. Killing the boss gives Elizabeth a damage increase against dragons and defense against them as well, so pretty cool. And also, if you're able to finish this wave within four turns, Elizabeth will actually get sure hit for a while, ten turns. And this is very handy because there's an enemy in the subsequent wave where you really want that. That metal ghost over there will give you metal meat, which sounds fucking disgusting, but it raises all of Ellie's stats, so... Yeah. <laughs> Tell that to her dentist. It also comes with a bunch of archers. Pretty unpleasant. You'll want to blow them up, if at all possible. Now, each of the waves... Now, each of the waves has a condition that you can meet by um, finishing it off really fast. Within, like, a certain number of turns. This one is also four turns, and if you do it, you gain 15 stars. I would not tunnel on that, though. There is actually a bonus at the very end for meeting all the fast clear bonuses, but the things you have to do and the RNG you need to actually get fast clears on every level, it's, uh, it's, a, little, it's a little much. I would not count on that. Really, there's only, like, one where you absolutely need it, and that's the next wave. But as for this one, the boss of this wave is uh, the Skelly King. And he will taunt Elizabeth for 10 turns. Uh, because of this, you'll want to actually keep her screened, especially against these archers in this wave. Because the Skeleton King can actually buff them, because he acts a lot like the, um, the one from the hunting quests. So, you know, attacking crit buffs and stuff like that. Pretty unpleasant. I take him out right away. I probably should have gone for the Skeleton instead, but... You know, this works. Now, during wave 2, you can actually slow clear. You don't need the clear bonus, like the fast clear bonus. What I would strongly recommend, though, is trying to exit the wave with a full NP bar on Ellie. It'll benefit you a lot. The ghouls can do damage if the Skeleton King buffs them, but they're not a huge threat by themselves. Just an inconvenience. They might chip her out a little bit. Now, as for team compositions, what you really want in this fight, uh, if you're running like a proper team, you want healing, debuff removal, and buff removal. That last one is really important if you're if you're not running like a huge dick DPS team. Okay, so wave three. 
This is where things get interesting, really interesting, because that villager on the left, uh, don't kill him. Uh, he won't like that, and neither will you, because if you do that, uh, he will debuff you with just a 100% crit star drop rate reduction. So no stars for you. At least not for a while. So the idea is that you have to kill those two enemies within two turns. The easiest way to do this is to actually save up Elizabeth's NP and blow up the goblin and then finish off the wolf. Now again, you want Elizabeth to get last hits on these, which is why I'm sort of struggling to pick my cards here. I opt not to follow up because I don't actually want to accidentally kill the wolf. So I'm just gambling on Elizabeth getting cards. The risk of doing this is that if you draw a weird set of cards, like say you draw one Elizabeth card and like two Ivan ones, you're or like the rest Ivan. So like one Elizabeth, four Ivan, you're screwed. Because there's a good chance Ivan kills that villager and the wolf if you try to mess with the order. So something to keep in mind. That's one of the risks. Uh, because, again, even though the villager is supposed to be your ally, he, he's treated as an enemy by game mechanics. So if you overflow damage because you, like, switch character cards and stuff like that, uh, you'll keep attacking the villager. But if you're able to save the villager, you gain a modest heal every turn. However, if you do it within two turns, that modest 300 health heal becomes a 1,000 health heal with a heal lamp attached to it. So that's really nice. That'll do serious work throughout the fight, and you really want that. So if nothing else, uh, make sure you finish level 3 within two turns. Now, as for this fourth wave, uh, the boss shows up right off the bat and actually nerfs your healing by a lot. So you'll want to cleanse that off to actually make use of your newfound healing buff. Destroying it gives you additional attack and defense against dragons. Quite nice. Uh, the boss can invuln itself, by the way, for one time. It's a one-hit buff. So just keep that in mind. Aside from that, you want the sea demon to go down quickly. Again, you don't want to leave archers on the board any longer than you have to. Another Metal Ghost here, and something I didn't mention about the Metal Ghosts earlier is that they actually... Um, they're quite they're quite hardy. So unless you, like, hit them with an Ellie Buster card, there's a chance you just won't do damage to them. Uh, if you crit them, it should be fine, but that's something you gotta keep in mind. Especially on the first Ghost. The second one, you should have enough buffs to just plow through. So if you clear this one within three turns, this uh, fourth battle, uh, your whole party gets 50% charge, which is nice, but it's not worth rushing through because you actually want to build resources, a ton of resources, in this battle. Because the next wave is a motherfucker. It is the run-ender. And you want to exit this wave with around 200% charge and as many stars as you can save up. That's why I'm using some weird hands here. Just so I can soften up that last lizard in hopes of uh, a nice chain. I don't get it here, but thankfully I don't do enough damage with these cards to actually finish off that lizard. Fishing for Elizabeth hands is, you know, just part and parcel of this particular challenge quest. But there is actually a strategy where you can run her solo. Like, you just run two taunters and just kill them off immediately. It makes the early parts of this run super consistent. However, the next wave becomes even more of a pain. And we'll get to why in a little bit. I end this with 199% charge, so mission failed. Because unless it's via skill charge... It doesn't round you up to, to an even 200. Real shame. So this is the Bastard Wave. Three mid-bosses, they have debuff immunity, and they have invuln pierce. 
Now, this is why I have Ivan, because he can purge all of their buffs. Now, it doesn't have to be Ivan. I like having Ivan because he also gives stars, and he can reduce Buster Resistance on MP. Very, very handy. Uh, but you can also run servants like Amox or even Martha, because all you really need to do is make sure the the Gazer doesn't have Invuln Pierce. If it NPs. If you can take it out in one turn, that works out. Um, You may have noticed I scummed there, and that's actually because I targeted the wrong enemy. If you look back in the video, like uh, 10 seconds, you'll see that I actually tap the Gazer, but it selects the Demon, and that's why you use the icons at the top and not the models, because enemy models are pretty weird. But yeah, if you can't kill the Gazer before it NPs, then you should make sure the Gazer doesn't have its buffs. Otherwise, use it on the Spriggan. If you have someone like Martha, and you can only um, purge buffs from one enemy. I have Waver as well, just to make sure that uh, they slow down. Very handy. Waver's not essential, but he provides you a lot of things you really want. Just a consistent supply of charge, some nice defensive utility, and of course, that attack buff. Yeah, and this NP, very nice for this wave. Now, let me talk a little more about the solo run for Elizabeth. This is the worst wave to try to do. I spent all morning trying to do the solo run, just to see how well it works, and this would just constantly end me. The reason is that you need to come into this wave with 200% charge. You have to. And either you need to hit a Buster Brave Chain with your NP and crit both Buster cards to kill the Gazer, or you need to roll one of Ellie's offensive buffs. either the one turn attack buff or the three turn buster buff from her third skill, the RNG one. That's why you come in with 200% charge because you have to use her third skill and you have to get a good result. And remember, she has like what, six effects? She has like six effects, only three of which will help you in that situation. But yeah, if you do that, then you have to uh, stack it up with arts cards just to make sure you can NP the Spriggan because the Spriggan itself is also a DPS check if you're doing the solo run You pretty much have to kill two out of three mid bosses before any one of them NPs If the uh, if the demon NPs it'll suck, but it's not the end of the world Like your guts will your guts probably will be pot, but you can recover from that uh, Failing that if you're doing the full team run, you can also run someone like Asclepius or Irisville, just to revive through it. Because remember, the enemies have Invuln Pierce, so you won't be able to use Elizabeth or your Mystic Code. By the way, Mystic Code for this pretty much has to be Atlas. Uh, you'll see why in the final wave, but it pretty much has to be Atlas. Thankfully, Atlas is around, um, well, year-round. It's one of the it's one of the unlockable Mystic Codes in the Caldea Gate. So if you don't have it, good time to go get it. And here we come to the final boss. This final boss. Yeah, it, it purges the buffs from the rest of your team. However, Elizabeth herself is going to be doing all the damage anyway, so you don't necessarily want them to overstay their welcome. Uh, as for that buff that he gave Elizabeth, he'll actually just heal her. Which is nice if you're coming into this fight with like a popped guts. Oh, by the way, um, if you beat that previous wave within eight turns, uh, you get six turns shaved off your cooldown. Pretty nice, but again, not essential. But if you were able to finish all the previous levels with their speed requirements met, the Dragon King over there will actually get reduced attack. Reduced attack, your hard type buffs go up. Uh, let's see, I think you get NP gain and you, like, you get increased crit star rate. That's what Game Press says, at least. I have never actually gotten the uh, the speed clear. So as you can see, I have Asclepius as my first backup unit. I realize that he's going to die in like one turn, no matter what. So I opt to just pop all his buffs here. And get like an incremental heal on Ellie. Hmm. I tried running Asclepius in front, and he's nice for a couple of things. But... You don't actually need the healing early on. Depending on how you approach the mid-boss wave, you may need him to NP, but... If you have a purger, it shouldn't be a problem. 
Also, you may notice he's level 61 because I had an unfortunate uh, Ember mishap where I tried a Ashwatthaman clear on Achilles and that ate through all my Embers. Real shame. So I have Mash here. Mash is just to give Ellie a little bit of extra protection. But I also have an unpleasant surprise equipped to her in the form of 500 year obsession. It's not absolutely necessary, but it was a, I took it as a bit of insurance. Yeah, I already spent all morning resetting this fight with the solo run. I was <laughs> I was pretty tired of doing that, so I decided, you know what? Let me just take a little bit of insurance. Stack my CEs in the back line just to make sure. I don't have to do this too many times. Because I like this fight. It's my favorite uh, challenge quest in the game. But, yeah. <laughs> the, the Gazer node is pretty bullshit. By the way, uh, I recall on JP, I tried to use Summer BB. And Summer BB is weird because she actually does kind of help you in this fight. But in kind of an esoteric way. Well, first of all, you can lock into a hand of all Elizabeth cards, and that's really nice. Um, but she can also just NP to reduce charge. Pretty handy. So, if you happen to have her, something to consider. Again, she doesn't purge buffs or heals, so in the end I decided not to take her. Well, actually, the problem is she doesn't charge accelerate. And you really want that against, um... Well, yeah, you really want that in general. So here we're closing in on the dragon's break bar. This is when shit tends to go really wrong. Especially if you're not running as like stacked up front line. And the reason for that is that the dragon will charm Elizabeth for two turns. And it starts stacking a defense buff at the end of every turn. And it'll, it'll do that indefinitely. Lucky for you, though, Elizabeth's NP actually bypasses defense buffs. So you want to get Elizabeth alone on the field with that dragon as quickly as possible at this point. In fact, Mash actually survived a turn longer than I expected. That's why I popped her invuln on the previous turn. And unfortunately, bites me pretty hard here because this is not the hand you want to see. And again, yeah, that cleanse, I'm sorry, that charm is the reason why you want to bring Atlas. Because if everyone else is dead, that is your only way of cleansing that charm. Now at this point, the various buffs you've gotten from doing the rest of the uh, quest should protect you against everything except the dragon's NP, which you want to invuln through, and um, if you eat too many crits in a row. That is completely possible. So if you have a spare invuln and you know you're on track to win the fight, it may be worth popping it just to make sure the boss doesn't do anything funny on like a key turn. Because another one of Atlas's perks is cooldown reduction. That actually saves you a lot of trouble, lets you pop your invuln and your buster buff uh, within about three to four turns. Yeah, at this point, but yeah, at this part of the fight, you're going to want to use an NPAA chain. Because of that dragon's defense buffs, your basic cards, your face cards are going to do less and less damage every turn. So you just want to gear yourself towards spamming her NP. But yeah, uh, good news about this fight, though, is that you don't need to run high-end servants like uh, Waver and Ivan. There are other substitutes. They don't do the job quite as well, but 
As long as you're able to open up enough of a window for that second to last wave not to just wipe you outright. You should be in pretty good shape. You can do that with budget servants. And you can even do that with Elizabeth by herself. Although, as I said, that is quite a rough run. Would not recommend the solo, although it is doable. But yeah, each NP is doing about 300k damage. Puts us in pretty good shape to win this. Dragon's NP, by the way, will one-shot you, so uh, don't fuck with it. Alright, and here, gonna set myself up for the final NP. Go Buster Brave for a bit of panache. And that should be it. So, I hope you found that video useful. Good luck if you still have to do the fight, and yeah. Uh, like if you like this video, subscribe for more, and uh, come watch me on Twitch, where I stream every weekend. 3 p.m. Pacific time, Friday through Sunday. Today, I'll actually be doing the Guildfest exhibition quests on uh, Mistake, among other things. Also going to try my hand at the Roma Quest Live, so if you want to see that in action, stop on by. Uh, that said, see you later. Peace!